Welcome, one and all. I'm going to take you on a journey around the world to parts unseen by most men. Why, I have traversed the great lands and oceans of the globe and bring you sights and scenes from places far away. Yes, a great deal of the world is populated by unwashed savages that don't have the decency to cover their reproductive organs. First, to jolly old England. You may wonder why, when you meet a British person, they have tiny red eyes, big ears, and long noses. We can now reveal the truth. Since the opening of the Underground Railroad system 30 years ago, the entire of London has moved beneath the earth. Just think of the joy children must feel being able to play unfettered by rain or refinery smoke. They are a dignified people, living among stalagmites in their dainty hats. And they have an underground king who worships an underground garden gnome. Have any of you been to New York City? It seems like the whole world is ending up on that tiny island. Now there's Lady Liberty, a marvelous statue. To welcome all the Irish people moving to our great country after all those potato problems. They are welcomed by tourists who toss potatoes out of the head of that lady. In New York City, they are making buildings so high, one day you can walk to the moon for a picnic. Wouldn't that be grand? It's true. Now, we spoke of that unwashed statue. It was a gift from France. How do you think France paid for such a gift? Wanton prostitution? <laughs> Selling of wine and horse meat? No, sir. I'm here to tell you that underneath the streets of Paris, they have discovered black gold. That's right. And a few years ago, Gustave Eiffel of the Eiffel Oil Company built the tallest oil derrick in the world. Yes, all around Paris, you will find that thick business. It ignites like brandy, which is why so many French aristocrats drink it as an aperitif to aid digestion. The women of France are dainty and fair of skin, partially because they use that crude oil to bathe in, anointing and greasing their bodies, often before committing sinful pleasures of the flesh. Places that don't change their ways are falling behind. Visit the streets of Italy, and there is literally nobody left. The churches are empty. There is nobody drinking tiny coffees and slurping spaghetti in the streets. The Italians have never been known for good architecture, and their crooked buildings are falling over. Where have all the hairy women and men gone? Where are them Italians? It is one of the world's great mysteries. You may have heard talk of a horseless carriage being invented, powered by whale oil, vapors, or demons. Ironically, that is a myth. What is more exciting, the Germans have developed a mechanized horse that never needs to eat or sleep. It is a marvel of invention and is intended to facilitate the German army when it invades France or Russia in their campaign to spread the gastronomical wonders of low-quality beer, sausages, and sauerkraut. They love cabbage. But other than America, where we have plenty of room, it is so crowded in Europe that they are racing to set up a new country at the North Pole, where they can dine on the delicacy of frozen fish, penguins, and polar bears. Imagine a place that never gets hot. You don't sweat while toiling in the field, and ice is much cheaper there. I predict that someday people of all nations will join hands at the North Pole, wearing furs and eating fish. My next adventure will be to visit Egypt, where I hear they live in giant triangles and talk in a Chinese-like language of birds and eyes and squiggly lines. And they worship cats, which is a bit worrisome and unsavory. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me on these fantastic journeys.